Okay, let's get started. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to give an overview of heavy clock energy loss in heavy ion collisions. So, um, the talk will be organized as the follows. First, I will introduce uh, uh, some of the some observations of heavy clock energy loss, and and also how we treat the evolution of the bulk medium in heavy ion collisions. Then I will uh, introduce the multi-stage evolution description to particle energy loss, currently uh, being employed in inside the JSK framework, which contains uh, both the in-medium Diglab evolution, which is uh, described by the meta model, and also the linear Boltzmann transport, or LBT. And then I will talk about uh, other energy loss mechanisms involving heavy flavor. And finally, I will give my conclusion. So again, uh, we can see, I believe you, you, you may have seen this plot uh, multiple times during the past few days, which is a uh, pipeline or time evolution of heavy ion collision. And because heavy ion collision is a multi-stage, multi-scale and many-body problem, it, it is very difficult to, to describe the, the whole collision process. And <clears throat> excuse me. And the, the currently the, the two key observations that made people believe of the existence of the QGP medium during the collision. Uh, are collective flow and quenching of, of hard probes. And among those hard probes, heavy quarks are particularly interesting because they are mainly produced at the early stage of the collision. So they will experience the full QGP evolution. And to characterize uh, or to quantify the, the energy loss of, of heavy flavors inside, inside the QGP, we can look at the nuclear modification factor, RAA, or, and the anisotropic flow, V2. And uh, the, the observation here is, is not only that the RAA for, for D mesons or B mesons have a significant, significant uh, suppression away from one, and also have a large V2 at, very, uh, at low PT around, uh, around uh, less than 10, 10 GeV, is also uh, the, the, com the, the comparisons with the comparisons between those heavy flavor uh, observables to the, to the charge hadron observables. So here we can see there's, uh, there seems to be a difference between, between the charge hadron RA and, and the D meson RAs at, at low PT. And our study is carried out by the JSK framework, uh, which has this uh, nice uh, workflow. And because JSK is a modular framework, it, it allows us to study different physics concepts in a consistent environment and, and, is, and is applicable to the full range of heavy ion phenomenology. So not only are we uh, studying the, the evolution of the bulk medium, but we are also studying the evolution of the pattern showering. And also, JetScape consists of a Bayesian analysis toolkit that enables systematic model data comparisons um, later. And in, in this talk, I will be mainly focusing on the high energy, high virtuality region, uh, high E, high Q, and also the high energy and low virtuality region, high E, low Q. So to, to, dis, to study the particle energy loss, we must first have a description of the bulk medium. And the, this bulk medium is currently generated or simulated using uh, the Trento using three, uh, mainly using three um, models, which are the Trento initial condition model, a 2 plus 1D pre-equilibrium dynamics model, and a 2 plus 1D uh, viscous hydrodynamics model. And we use the best fit uh, of the simulations to, to hydronic observables, which is shown on the right, on the right-hand side, that, that consists of uh, charge hydron yields, mean PT, 
uh, flow coefficients, etc. And and this currently the, this uh, this underlying QGP simulation is used to study both uh, light flavor absorbables and also heavy flavor absorbables. And and the uh, the energy loss of of heavy flavor uh, as well as uh, light flavor partons inside the QGP uh, is is simulated by the uh, linear linear linearized Boltzmann transport equation, which consists both uh, the elastic scattering kernel and also the inelastic scattering kernel. However, when actually solving uh, this LPT equation, when not solving the, uh, the time evolution of the parton distribution function, uh, F1, but, but rather we use Monte Carlo simulations that starts with an ensemble of partons and H at each time step, at each time step for each parton, we calculate its scattering rate. For example, the elastic scattering rate is calculated by this formula, and then we can um, get the average number of scatterings during this time step, time step delta t. And after that, we can draw random numbers to determine whether uh, the the collision or the scattering happens or not, and if it does happen, what uh, momentum does does the parton scatters with, uh, etc. And the inelastic scattering rate is is shown here, and we can see uh, so here uh, we can see three interesting pieces in this formula, which are, which is the uh, the dead cone effect, which sub, which essentially suppresses the, the the radiation uh, inside a characteristic uh, angle around around the the massive par parent parton, and also this uh, this sine square term, which is the interference term, due to uh, the contribution from uh, different diagrams for this two to three uh, process. And the last piece is this q hat uh, parameter, which is the jet which is the jet transport coefficient that characterizes the transverse momentum broadening uh, of the parent parton given a uh, for a given pass length. And in 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 the current version of Jetscape, we we have we we have we ha you have the option to use the Hartzell loop uh, formula for this q hat, which is shown here uh, as q hat HTL. And the LBT uh, evolution is 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 not the only uh, energy, energy loss mechanism um, in heaven collisions. So because it it assumes onshore partons, and those onshore partons are typically initiated initiated by Monte Carlo generators like like PCR. and PCR follows the QCD factorization theorem, which uh, it which initiates the the parton shower from some hard processes. And then evolve the parton shower following the vacuum Diglab equation simulated by the pseudocomb form factor. Uh, however, uh, this this uh, this vacuum Diglab evolution picture may not hold in heavy collisions because the formation time of the radiated gluons may be even longer than the length of the medium, so the radiation pattern should be modified by by scatterings with the medium. And indeed, if you look at uh, this right plot, uh, which calculates the the number of scatterings in the Diglab phase and 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 the transport phase, you can see um, the medium modification is especially important for for highly energetic partons. And so the method model suggests a linear correction to the splitting function in the pseudocomb form factors. To account for uh, this medium modification, and for a heavy quark radiating a gluon, um, this modification reads uh, <coughs> reads uh, is is shown in in the in this formula, where the mass corrections to the different uh, variables is shown on the on the top right. So essentially, we have now we have a multi-stage approach 
for parton energy loss. We, we start with a highly energetic, highly vir virtual parton, and it starts evolving in the matter region and loses its energy and virtuality. And when its virtuality uh, reaches some switching virtuality QS, we will uh, the we will switch the description to the to the LBT uh, equations. And another possible consideration uh, is is for the Q hat in the matter region because th this HTL formula is 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 calculated by uh, by considering on shell patterns, but in the matter phase uh, we we are also we also have the virtuality uh, uh, for the parton, and and also we this this idea is inspired by the observation that the effective Q hat extracted from lead collisions at a higher collision energy is even lower than the virtuality extracted from gold gold collisions at a lower collision energy. So a previous calculation. Uh, of the Q hat assuming this virtual dependence uh, shows its virtual dependence uh, like like this on the on the right bottom plot. And in, in the current Jetscape version, we, we adopt uh, a simple parameterization um, for this virtual dependence, which is this additional H factor that is uh, that has this uh, this this form. And C1 and C2 are the uh, are the actual parameters because c uh, because c zero is 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 here to to regularize to regulate uh, to regulate uh, this this virtuality dependent q hat to be the same as uh, q hat HTL when the virtuality of the parton is is at the switching virtuality so this q hat dependent uh, this virtuality dependent q hat will goes back will go back to the Q hat HTL when the virtuality is at the switching virtuality. So th this is one possible um, parameterization for the virtuality dependent Q hat. And so let me show some uh, some simulation results uh, of both the D-meson array and the charge hadron array at uh, at in lead collisions at 5.02 TV and 0 to 10 centrality. So on, on the top plot, we are showing um, the LBT only simulations, where uh, we are also considering a fixed FS, uh, which is this light blue curve, and also a, a running FS implementation, which is this dark dark blue. And we can see that the, the default LBT implementation uh, in Jetscape is, is, in, is inconsistent with the RA data at high PT. And another another simulation we can do is to calculate the matter only simulation with different uh, virtuality uh, with different Q hat implement implementations. So we can see that the light green on the, on the bottom two plots. The light green one is using the HTL formula for the Q hat, and the the dark blue, the dark green one is using the virtuality dependent Q hat and taking C one and C two to be those two. Uh, values, and here with the virtual dependent Q hat and those two uh, values for the uh, for the C one and C two, we can see that the RA is very close to one, indicating very little energy loss in the in the matter phase. And when we combine matter and LPT together, uh, we we consider three combinations uh, for the C one and C two, and those. We can see like those finite values for C1 and C2 are basically interpolating between the vacuum limit, where uh, there's no energy loss, essentially no energy loss in the matter phase, and also the the HTL HTL limit where um, there's no virtuality for the parton. And we can see by going from HTL to to the virtual dependent Q hat, we we see a we see a visible enhancement of RA at high PT. However, when we further increase C1 and C2, uh, we see very little uh, difference for, for the RA. And this is because uh, the energy loss in the matter phase is, is zero when C1 and C2 goes to infinity, but the energy loss in the matter phase is already pretty small 
uh, when C1 and C2 takes finite values. So the energy loss or the RA cannot be very sensitive to the values uh, of C1 and C2 because you are mapping an infinite range to a, to a small finite range. And another uh, parameter we can look at is the switching virtuality. And we can see this time it has a very big uh, effect on both, on both RAs because th this switching virtuality effectively, effectively controls the time the particle spent in the LPT phase where, where the most energy loss happens. And continuing, we can use the, the current best fit of the parameters to calculate the RA at two, uh, two more centralities, 10 to 30 and 30 to 50. And we can see uh, uh, the data generally agrees with the matter plus LBT simulations. So our observation so far, our observation so far is that the matter, uh, the matter model effectively reduces the energy loss uh, uh, in, the, in the LPT phase because it, it reduces the time um, a part of spending in the LPT phase. Thus, thus, and this is why Meta plus LPT predicts high RA at high PT. And we can also see that charm quarks are more suppressed uh, than, than charge hadrons at high PT uh, in the Meta phase. And this can be seen by, uh, by comparing the uh, the the RA for D mesons and also the RA for charge hadrons in in both the matter only simulations and also in matter plus LBT simulations on the top plot on the top two plots, and we also see a weaker dependence on centrality uh, for matter plus LBT, and this is shown by plotting the ratio between LBT simulations and matter plus LBT simulations for different centralities uh, on the on the bottom two plots. And uh, we can take uh, our calculation a step further by using Bayesian analysis to 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 explore basically to explore the uh, express expressiveness power of, of our simulations uh, with those four parameters that I have uh, I have talked about. So uh, on the on the right plot we can see. Uh, the the prior range and also the posterior range, uh, posterior uh, posterior predictions for not only uh, charge hadrons which is this first plot d mesons which is the this the second plot and also for uh, inclusive jet arrays which are the later three plots and here we see a generally a very good agreement with the data except for a few uh, except except for a few data points that has large uh, uncertainties. And on the left, I'm showing the posterior distribution uh, for the parameters. So alpha s, c1, c2, and qs. And we see a, a strong peak for alpha s and a, uh, a slightly weaker peak, but still a peak for, uh, for, for the qs, which is the switching virtuality. And surprisingly, their, uh, their values, the, the values at the peak, is very similar to previous studies, uh, and or maybe maybe a slightly sm smaller for the QS, and also we see a very a weak constraint on C1, and a slightly a slight preference of large C2, and this is also uh, consistent with our previous uh, observation that C1 and C2 that is C1, which is. Uh, the RA are very insensitive to C1 and C2. And to simulate heavy flavor or, or particle energy loss in Jetscape uh, using Meta plus LBT, you, you, should, you need to assign those, uh, those settings for, for the Meta and LBT uh, model in the user XML file, which I believe Amit will be talking about more um, in the hands-on session. And because we're using, uh, so this Q hat parameterization type five indicates that we're using uh, the the Q hat, we're using the virtual dependent Q hat uh, parameterization that I have been talking about. And Q hat A and Q hat B are the are the C one and C two parameters. And uh, specific some 
the specific settings for simulating heavy favor is that you need to you need to disable you need to manually disable heavy meson decay um, by writing those uh, settings for PCR in the colorless heterogenization uh, initialization function uh, under this pass. So so this this is uh, more like a hack in the in the current uh, in the current Jetscape version. But I think in the future we we make we may we can move those uh, those settings into the user XML file as well. And there are other treatments um, or mechanisms for uh, for heavy for heavy clock energy loss. Uh, for example, if we assume that the momentum exchange between the heavy between the heavy parton and the medium partons are are small and frequent, we can use long term dynamics or essentially diffusion equations. And in this diffusion equation uh, or long term equation. Uh, you have the drag force and thermal random force, which accounts for the elastic scatterings uh, with the medium. And also, the, you have you can consider you can or you, you can include uh, the recoil force from gluon emissions, which is the inelastic scattering uh, in the LBT uh, equation. And later, there's the little model, which accounts for which take which which considers both uh, the diffusion. Uh, picture and also the scattering picture, and you can look at look it up in this reference. And another missing uh, piece in our current uh, simulations is the recombination mechanism in heterogenization, which essentially says that it is possible uh, for a heavy flavor, for heavy parton to to recombine with uh, with one or more one or two. Uh, medium partons to form a heavy meson or a heavy baryon. And the probability for this recombination uh, as a function of the heavy quark momentum is shown on the right plot. And if, if we assume that um, this recombination is instantaneous and also um, the, the, the wave functions for the, for the heavy flavor and also the medium partons are uh, S waves or, or essentially simply Gaussians, we can write down the, the moment, momentum distribution of the heavy mesons or the heavy baryons using the following, uh, using the formulas given here. But uh, there are more uh, detailed considerations for, for the recombination mechanisms um, in, more recent, in, in more recent studies. And <clears throat> so here I'm showing the 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 best fit essentially um, uh, of 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 heavy flavor of, or D meson R A and V two using the Duke Langevin or, or Langevin equation simulations and also using the Lido uh, model that I have just talked about and here here we can see the the description of the data extends to below ten GeV. Uh, for both cases, because now uh, the recommendation mechanism is is accounted for, and also there's uh, not there's consideration for non perturbative uh, effects in the in the transport or in the diffusion coefficients uh, inside the diffusion equations. So uh, because of those two additional uh, considerations. Uh, those calculations can cover uh, can cover the, the data below 10 GeV. So um, in the future, uh, in, in the future we, we can also we can also uh, consider those those mechanisms in, in the JSK framework. So now uh, it comes to my um, conclusion. So we see uh, in this talk, Jetscape employs a multi-stage evolution approach to, to jet energy loss. And using this multi-stage approach, we can achieve a simultaneous description of, of charge hadrons, d meson and inclusive jet of Dobos. But we still need more precise and high PT RA data for further validation. And there exists um, uh, other LBT-only simulations 
which is listed here for describing medium to high PT RA calculations. So those LBT only simulations, they uh, they were carried out outside of the JSK framework. So, so they may have different treat, treatment for the evolution of the bulk medium. And also they have uh, further modifications to the LBT implementation compared to, to the to the current LBT, to the default LBT implementation in Jetscape. So if you are interested, you can you can also check uh, check those references. And to go to lower PT, um, previous studies considering different uh, considering diffusion mechanisms with effective modeling of the diffusion coefficients that accounts for uh, non perturbative effects, and also uh, considering combination mechanisms, they are able they are able to describe the RA and V2 data of, of heavy flavors. And in the future, there will be more uh, heavy flavor related uh, observables, for example, the jet, jet observables and jet substructure observables. Uh, the, the measurements will be coming out and also uh, the, the, the modeling for those for those observables are, are currently in progress. And that's all for my uh, for my talk. Thank you. I'll, I'll take questions from from here. Thank you, Wenke, for your nice uh, summary of the heavy flavor jet energy loss and heavy flavor loss. Um, are there any questions? I don't see any in the chat. You're welcome to ask. There was something in the Slack, but I think it was answered already and it was more related to the previous talk yeah So let me ask you, you say in the future, you will have uh, this uh, recombination and uh, other things. Uh, when is that uh, going to happen? What's the time scale? Um, I think currently there's, there's a different branch that, than what, I'm being, what I, I've been using that already, uh, that already have the, the recombination um implemented i we just haven't uh, merged those two branches together so so if we want to so if we want to if we want that to happen it can happen really quick uh that's my that's my guess okay thank you So is this branch, uh, again, to follow up, is this branch visible to everyone or just the uh, inside Jetscape at the moment? Uh, that I'm not sure, sorry. <laughs> I'm... Okay. And one more question. So will you be able to also describe Quarconia? Um, talk about Corconia. Hi, uh, you, last question. I couldn't hear it. No. I said, will will you be able to describe Corconia? Right. So Mike Strickland is working on adding a module for doing Corconium suppression. And what so about I, the, law? The, so, so the one before, the one that you asked before that about the branch, I, I, I didn't hear that. Uh, what it was whether the this branch is visible to anyone out uh, or is it just because he was saying that the recombination is in a separate branch mm -hmm. whether it's visible to people outside of jetscape that that was my question uh i think the latest version is probably not visible but someone yeah. can correct me on that but i think that, that there is an earlier version of it that is visible to the outside Okay. 
Thank you. In the latest version, there's even a, a connection between the hadrons that come out of recombination and smash. So smash can actually pick up those hadrons and do, you know, the, the hadrons in the jet will start doing hadronic energy loss in the, in the hadronic medium. I don't know for sure. I think Amit or Chatur can tell me, uh, you know, if that, if that made it into the last oh. update, uh, if into the last public update. Yeah, I think the latest uh, update is not included yet. Okay. 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 I I don't see uh, any more questions. So yep. thank you very so much. One question is on Slack. There's oh. One question on Slack. Okay. 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 There is one. Okay. Luis, go. Why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Slide oh. eighteen. Yes, yes. Uh, for for B for B mesons um, or B hadrons, it happens essentially the same. You just need to uh, disable the uh, the decay for for the for the B mesons that you want to study. Okay, one last call. If there's any question, please ask. If not, thanks uh, again, and we will resume in 10 minutes with the hands-on session. Okay.